we are in Lisbon, Portugal, the last stop on our epic 100-day European adventure. Today we're going to show you all the cheap eats this awesome city has to offer. spot on top of a hill called La Piadina trying a Portuguese quesadilla. Thank you. Mine has like a smoked cheese, a balsamic vinegar, and rocket as well as prosciutto. And they make those tortillas like by hand and press them out like to order. I got a veg option. It's brie, grilled zucchini, and olive spread. <laughs> olive spread looks so gross, but I'm sure it tastes good. <laughs> mm. All I'm missing is hot sauce. And luckily Brandon has some. <laughs> We're almost out. We just bought this like four days ago. <laughs> One thing, it's not all the way melted like a quesadilla would be. It's more like a panini sandwich, sort of, on this really thick, wholesome tortilla. It's really good, though. The tortilla is so good. I would say that this is Alyssa's, like, perfect ingredients of a sandwich, like the zucchini, the bitter olives, and then you also have that, like, brie cheese. And now we've snuck in some hot sauce, so it is absolutely, like, made for Alyssa. <laughs> That was a fantastic snack and something you definitely have to try when you're in Portugal. Next up, Mantigaria for a pastis de nata, which is a Portuguese egg tart. I am so excited to try this. That staff was so cool. Everyone's smiling, laughing, like everyone who came in here, everyone's having such a good time. There's like a counter along the side where they're making them to order and they only make a few. So they're nice and warm when they come out and they hand them to you. And they're only one euro 20. We got the goods. We got it to go. It was crazy in there, super busy. We have had many egg tarts before. I was actually under the impression that they were a Chinese dessert, but it turns out they're actually made from Portuguese monks who lived in Lisbon, who studied in Paris, and they learned the art of making pastries. And they used so many egg whites for starching their clothes, they had all these egg yolks left over, and they actually invented the egg tart like that. And one difference between like the Asian variety that you can get is sometimes they'll add cinnamon to the top and it's always creme brulee like that. So they brulee the top, whereas if you'll see them in like Thailand or anything like that, they'll be just a, a full yellow. But I am so excited to try this. <laughs> Brandon really hyped this up, so I'm excited. Mmm, ooh, ooh, and it's warm. Oh, the hype is real. It's like sugar custard inside of a croissant flaky crust and it being warm is so good. I've never had a warm one. They always come cold. It's like more melty and custardy because it's warm, whereas sometimes they're more like congealed and solid. It's so good warm. I'm glad we got two. Mmm. Was that like the place to get them? I have no idea. I looked for a place that had good ratings and there was a line. This is so worth the hype. This is so much more custardy. There's different flavors. The brulee is amazing. The pastry, it's by far the best egg tart I've ever had. I guess you have to come to the source, to Portugal, to Lisbon, to try it for yourself. This is a perfect thing. Wow. These girls just pulled us over and asked for directions to Pink Street, which apparently is a tourist attraction we had no idea about. So now we're just gonna go that way too. This seems to be just an Instagrammable street that they've painted pink. There's umbrellas above and there's a cool bridge at the end of the alleyway. So we are not actually on the prowl for a pink street. We are looking for a classic Portuguese sandwich called a Bifana. And we're just a couple blocks away from the place that we're going. So if you're going to the Bifana spot, might as well check out Pink Street while you're doing it. We found the spot, O Triangula da Ribeira. We are headed in here to get one of Portugal's signature foods. A Bifana? Yeah, that's all it's called. Bifana. A Bifana. Which is the 
pork sandwich on squishy bread and you can get cheese and egg. We're gonna get two. And this place is like the cheapest place in the entire world. You can get a sandwich for two dollars and eighty euro two eighty euro. So the grilled meats are being prepared to order and she is like seasoning it and the fire is going over the pan and she seasoned it with salt and pepper and just a little bit of fresh raw garlic. So we got two sandwiches. We got the regular just pork and cheese and then we got a pork, cheese and egg. They have mustard and spicy sauce on the counter that you can self-serve on yourself. The spicy sauce is so good. He said it's piri piri, but better than piri piri that I've had before. This place is so cute. It's so tiny. There's only six seats and it didn't look like anyone was ordering to go food. So we decided to stand at the counter and get it here. And then we decided to order something to go to take with us. So we got three sandwiches and two beers and our total was 11 euros. We only had to wait about 10 minutes. I would say that if you are in Portugal, this is an absolute must. The bread is super rustic. It's got like a crispy outside, but the inside is soft. That mustard is lightly sweet, but mostly bitter. The piri piri, like Alyssa said, is the bomb. And the pork is seasoned amazingly. It's so juicy. I couldn't believe how juicy it was. They cook it on the plancha for like less than 30 seconds. So everything is just cooked so quickly and to order. It is absolutely incredible. This is incredible. <laughs> That was literally the most amazing experience. The guy was so cute and so nice and he like helped us translate our Spanish into Portuguese and he told us what to order and he made sure that we had the spiciest salsa which is homemade and it was freaking amazing. Yeah. It's like one of my favorite experiences that we've had in the whole 94 days that we've been in Europe. Absolutely. This guy had a line of 30 people and he was just chilling, making your sandwich quick and then not charging enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you're ever in Lisbon, do Triangula de Ribera, you absolutely have to experience this place. And we are going to experience it again on the streets now. <laughs> I know that this isn't the traditional place you would have this, but they had a salt cod fritter and we haven't tried one yet, so we're gonna dig in. Oh, it's uh, soft. I'm just gonna bite it, I yeah. think. Mm. Oh, it's bomb. This is actually really incredible. It's better than I thought that it would be. Uh, it kind of has like a hairy, furry texture on the outside and you get stringy bits of fish. I will say it's most similar to like we would get a crab cake. I think it's because they salt the cod. So you get a little saltier, sweet flavor. Uh, it is really bomb though. It's good. It's softer than I expected. It would be bomb if it's fried. <laughs> I can't say I've never seen that in America. So it's definitely worth trying once. It's so cold up here. <laughs> It's like so nice when you're walking up the hills and then you stop, sit down and it's so windy and freezing. <laughs> We stumbled upon this tiny little sandwich shop and it looks like they have like American style little mommy sandwiches. So we're gonna go in for a quick bite to eat. This is like the Big Mac of tuna sandwiches. <laughs> it's humongous. It's really good. It's not like a tuna salad or anything. It's just regular tuna, but the tomatoes are so juicy on it. It's really good. I got the egg and cheese. It's just egg on cheese. The cheese is so stringy and melty. It's delicious. And it's on white bread. I like white bread and bread and like sweet bread. So it like came perfectly for us. <laughs> We walked up some pretty intense steps to get here and it was 1 million percent worth it. And this gave me that Bodega New York feel that I have been missing and it was amazing. 10 out of 10. Have a great day. He didn't have a credit card machine, but I think he shares with his shop across the street. So we had to come over here to pay, but it was only eight euro for those two sandwiches. And we got a huge water for only two euro. And that guy was like amazing. He was so nice and he is a sandwich magician.
We saw fries, we had to stop. They were three dollars. Who says no to three dollar fries? We had a puri puri mayo, crispy onions, jalapeno, and pancetta. Total three dollars thirty euro. This place is super cute too. The branding, the decor, the little stands for your fries. Love it. Love everything about it. The jalapenos are like fresh. They're super spicy. We just followed on Instagram and they updated in real time their Instagram counter over there. Look at this picture. Follow, here's good on Instagram. We have traveled all over the world and we love real palm frites. Those are just as good, if not better, than any we've had in Belgium. So the next spot that we're hitting up is a tinned fish restaurant called Sol y Pesca. And Anthony Bourdain went there. I have no idea what a tinned fish restaurant even means, but I guess we are gonna find out shortly. So the menu is served on a fishing pole and it has a bunch of different options of tinned fish. And it uh, looks like they have a display of some of the items they offer. It's freshly tinned in Portugal and they use local ingredients and they plate it for you nice so you can eat and drink and grab some tinned fish. He said I did a good job so hopefully we got a good mix. We got some baby sardines, we got some mackerel with habanero, we also got a codfish with garbanzo beans and some goat cheese as well. To drink they had house wine for like 250 a glass which is insane so we got one red and one white. In Portugal they drink almost exclusively Portuguese wine so 98% of the wines that you'll find in Portugal are Portuguese wines which is really cool. And cheap. And cheap. <laughs> yeah this was 250 and it's quite good. This is just their house wine, and it's similar to like a Malbec. Fruity notes, a little bit of like dried plum, but it's really easy drinking. Spicy sardines and the petit scala with habanero. Thank you. So the codfish has like a super buttery flavor, but it's a very firm fish. It's got a very toothsome bite to it. That habanero mackerel is actually not very spicy, but it has a roasted tomato flavor, and it's so good. It looks intimidating out of the ones that we got, but it's not. And sardines, I'm learning, are my new favorite. I have to start eating them more. The olive oil is really high quality, and they serve it with like a coriander, and there's a little bit of pepper on there, so there's some spice. <laughs> I think that these guys are my favorite. Me too. They're so delicate. You know how much I love tiny flies. <laughs> Thanks. Man, that was absolutely perfect. The staff was really helpful and the wine was fantastic. What a great way to kill some time and have a couple snacks. So many different options, like it's a very long menu. Just go in, get a couple dishes per person. Yeah, and he'll help you out if you don't know what to get. Just like tell him flavors that you like and things that you're scared of and he'll make sure that you get it. I cannot believe how good that is. I had no idea how much I actually loved tin fish. <laughs> also, it's just on Pink Street. So if you're coming to Pink Street to take the epic Instagram photo, just stop in, get a tin of fish and a cheap beer. Why not? Be adventurous. How many times are you in Lisbon? Thank you guys so much for watching our last 100 days in Europe. But the travel is not over yet. The next two weeks we're headed to New York and then a quick trip to Mexico, followed by 50 days in Asia. If you like travel videos like these, don't forget to subscribe to see where we go next. <laughs> There's a car coming. <laughs> next up on the list is Monte. <laughs> I will like it better when I know how to say the words. Montegra for a pastis. Montegra? What, how would you say it? Montegaria? Next up, Mantigarria. We realize we're American and we like sauce, so he brought over some garlic mayo too. So now we've got mayo on our tuna sandwich. I would honestly wear a hat made out of this <laughs> sandwich everywhere I go so that people know how much I love it. <laughs> Every time. Every time I try to eat it, it ends like Also, yeah. you eat the sardine whole. Like, don't worry about bones or anything. There's no freaking bones in it. Just yeah. eat it. So I have determined after a couple days that everything in Lisbon is uphill. <laughs> and that there are more peacocks than people. <laughs>
We left the house today and Brandon said we have two places to try and at the first place he's got us having three sandwiches so I have no idea how much he thinks I can eat. Whatever happened to predictability? The postman, the paper boy, stuff on TV.